Welcome everyone to my first video lecture. Uh, this is Chris Peterson. Uh, this is a game I played against Billy Wilson, an A player from Colorado. And uh, this is a game from the Denver Chess Club, played uh, August 21st, 2007. Here we go. The opening is kind of a London System slash Grunfeld mix, and it, it turns out to be a little awkward for White because Knight is a little misplaced on F3 for his whole Yugoslav type attack, which he tries to set up later on. Um, and the Knight, uh, after it hops into E5, it, it just gets traded, so uh, maybe it would be a little better to hold off on developing the Knight and castling Queenside a little early. So maybe you can play an f3, e4 kind of thing. Okay, now this move, g4, was uh, influenced from our last game we played, where we had a similar position, but he had castle queenside uh, without playing g4, and that led to me playing bishop f5 and knight b4, not only attacking his c2 pawn, but also giving me great counterplay and a faster attack on the queenside. He had to respond to my threats instead of me responding to his. Uh, so here I actually played a blunder. Uh, I played queen b6, and that actually loses a pawn pretty quickly to g5, knight e4, and knight takes d5. Because after queen takes b2, he can play knight takes c6, followed by knight takes e7. And... Uh, think about it because I thought after queen b2 I would have enough counterplay as well as attacking chances to hold on but uh, Fritz did not like my idea there uh, and I guess he also saw during the game that it would be a little dangerous for him to go into that and so decided to kick my queen around with knight a4 uh, queen a5 check and after c3 uh, He's kind of showing me that he's not necessarily going to castle right away, either queenside or kingside, and he's just going to leave his king in the center. So I figured I'm going to force him to do something with his king rather than just sit there, and I played c takes d4, which uh, will open the center as well as uh, force him to try to give his king a hiding spot because... If everything opens up in the center, his king is going to be very loose. So now Billy decides to trade off the knights to help alleviate some pressure on his center. And after this, I play b takes c6. And now if he ever decides to castle queenside, I'll have a good square for one of my rooks and a good launching pad for an attack via the, the half-open b-file. Uh, that way I can pressure the b2 pawn. So now he just recaptures. And now after knight d7, I had the plan of e5, and it, it's a good plan, but maybe a little more prudent and testing line would have been just bishop takes g4. Now, you might be saying, oh no, you know, you're just losing a piece there, Chris, but uh, it's not true, because after bishop takes g4, knight takes g4, if the queen captures on g4, the knight on a4 will be hanging. So that would be a good way for me to uh, kind of, you know, test his attacking ability because it'll open up the g-file and uh, I'll be up a pawn, so he'll have to do something or I'll be able to just uh, grind out a win there. Okay, so knight d7, um, and then after b4, my queen has to go all the way back to the starting square. And uh, uh, it, it might look like that, that I have a bad position here because uh, I only have two pieces developed and he's got three and he's going to attack me soon. Um, but really, my my position's really holding on very well here because uh, my position's very solid, for one. It's going to be very difficult for him to attack me. And number two, the center is about to blow open after I play e5. And after that, my pieces will come alive, and I'll be able to uh, get some very good piece activity. Meanwhile, his knight on a4 is kind of out of the game, uh, even though it might have an outpost later on on c5. And his king is still uh, kind of trapped in the center with no uh, good place for it to go at the moment. Uh, now he follows up with queen 2. Um, so he can maybe trade off my dark square bishop, which would make the, the dark squares around my king pretty weak, and he'll, he'll have a better chance of attacking me. 
So, uh, e5. Now my idea with e5 is one to open the center, and also two, uh, if he plays bishop h6, which I'm kind of inviting, uh, which in fact he does play, um, I'll actually win a tempo here by playing bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, and now his queen uh, is out of play there over there. Uh, even though it looks pretty strongly posted, uh, it's not doing anything. Because, you know, queen can't mate me all by itself. So, uh, after he takes d4, c takes d4, and queen e7, I'm hitting the b4 pawn, and also preventing his king from escaping the center. So, uh, he puts his queen back, which is where I won the tempo. Um, and now, uh, his king is stuck in the center, he just lost the tempo, and his b4 pawn is kind of loose. Uh, and here, uh, I play rook e8, uh, trying to keep his king in the center, but maybe a little better was bishop a6, <clears throat> because now if he tries king f1, I'll be able to play bishop takes e2, queen e2, and queen takes b4. Uh, I played rook e8, and now he's got a, a pretty good defensive move here, which is f1. Uh, it kind of holds on for a little bit, gets him out of that pin. Um, but my pieces are just kind of kind of swarm in. Um, yeah, after knight f6, I'm hitting both e4 and g4, so he'll have to guard him somehow. Because if he doesn't, uh, my knight will just hop in there, and he'll have a tough time guarding. So, so his only really good move here is f3, which is what he did. Uh, that'll keep my knight out for a few more moves. Um, and, and now I play some positional moves uh, to try to force him to play a certain move that'll open up a, a tactic for me. Uh, usually it's really bad to try to get your opponent to play a certain move. It, it's called hope chess. Uh, you never want to play hope chess. That's uh, bad because if they don't ever play what you're hoping for, you'll probably end up for a bad position. All right, so I play rook b8, hitting the b4 pawn which, like I said before, is pretty weak, uh, after a3, and I chisel away at it with a5. And, and now he plays the move that I was hoping he would play. Uh, he plays rook b1. Uh, it opens up this tactic for me. Uh, and if you look, he has three pieces hanging on the board right now. Well, really four if you count the queen too. Um, so, uh, my best way to attack the most number of pieces is to get my queen to e4. Uh, that'll hit both of his rooks at the same time, and uh, yeah. So uh, here I play a tactic to deflect his f pawn from guarding the e4 square. Bishop takes g4. Knight takes g4 doesn't quite work because of king f2. And if I play bishop g4, uh, it leaves open for this to happen. Now I can sacrifice my queen because I get it back next move with this check. And even though he has uh, two pieces for the rook, um, I'm winning quite a few pawns over here on the queen side. He played knight c5. Alright, I just check him. And now not only am I up a pawn, but I am really going to attack him. And this move here, uh, knight h5, uh, opens up my queen to go to the h4 e1 diagonal. And if you look at a lot of tactics problems, you'll, you'll kind of notice that... 90% uh, of the time, the winning moves are just opening the the queen to get nearer the king. And with knight h5, I'm doing just that, because after queen check here, his king's going to have to go here. And then after knight f4, he's going to have a, a difficult time defending and holding on to his material. Now he plays a really, really bad move, uh, knight d3. It actually loses the queen by force um, to queen take... Queen to h4 check and queen d4 check. Um, uh, maybe better he could play uh, bishop f1, but after queen h4 check, king g1, bishop takes f1, and rook takes f1, and now knight f4, and uh, I'm really just really close to either winning his queen or mating him, so it's probably resignable at this point. That's the game, and... Uh, give me suggestions. This is my first one. Uh, I'm really open to, you know, doing better with suggestions and, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching.